Welcome back everybody, this is Always back with another video on the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can install a WebStorm on Linux and Node.js and a few other things that you need to have installed on your Ubuntu operating system for web development. Now the reason why I'm making this video is because I actually switched from Windows to Linux Ubuntu as my primary workstation. So all my web development, app development and all the programming related tasks I'll be doing on Linux Ubuntu from now on. So I'm installing a few softwares and um, installing softwares on Linux is a little bit different than other operating system, for example, Windows just have an exe file, you just double click on that and it installs the software. Mac has the same kind of thing, .dmg, uh, you just double click on it, drag that file to your app folder and it installs. But installing the software on Linux is a little bit different. So here, first of all, we'll install WebStorm, which is my primary ID for all the JavaScript work. So yeah, WebStorm is pretty great. Check it out. And it's not a sponsored video. So I've actually already downloaded WebStorm here. So if you want to download it, it gives you a 30 day trial. Other than that, it's just $50, but it's really worth uh, spending that money if you're really serious about web development. So I've already downloaded that. It's in my uh, download folder. So here, so how do we install this? First of all, what we want to do here, we want to go to home and I want to create a folder here. I want to call it apps. So all the apps I will install will go into this folder. And then after that, we go back to download folder, right click on it and extract this here. And uh, once it get extracted, then we can actually copy and paste uh, to our folder there. So let's just go and I'm just going to move this to, let's just say go home, app folder and I'm going to click on the select here. So it's going to move that folder there. Now we don't really need that zip file there, but we can just see that there. Now here, once you download that, you go to WebStorm folder, get inside, and there's a folder called a bin. And here you want to open up the terminal. So terminal is like a command prompt in a Linux world. So we'll go and open the terminal from here. So I'll just search for terminal and I'll bring up my terminal. Now here in this folder, I have this file called .sh, webstrom.sh. So this is the file I wanna execute. So we'll just go dot slash webstrom.sh. Now, there's another issue here that we should have gone into this folder and then opened the terminal. Now we'll have to navigate to this folder and that's a bit of work. So what I'll do, I'll close this, I'll right click in the folder and I'll say open in terminal. So I can open directly here. So I don't have to give the path. So here, now we'll just go dot slash web strong okay dot has such i'm going to enter and basically it's going to go read that file and just open up the web strong now i'm going to click ok it's going to tell me to accept few things i'm going to accept it and here i will have my web strong account where i'll just type the username and password it will validate that and basically it's up and running now. So WebStorm is up and running. Now the next thing you can do here, right click on it and then make that add to favorites. So just simply click OK, WebStorm has been installed. I'm gonna close this and now if I go to the app folder and here we should see WebStorm. I'm gonna right click and add to favorites. The next thing what I tend to install is uh, Visual Studio Code, which is a free version for uh, JavaScript development. I'll keep that on the side in case I got some problem with the uh, with webstrom so i'll just go search for vs code and we'll just go and download and install that as well so here it shouldn't take long long so it's a dev so whenever you see the dev file so dev file is basically it's executable file in the linux world so i'm just gonna save that as well and it shouldn't take that long it should take about like two minutes my speed is about two megabytes per second, which is not that bad, but not that great as well. All right, so this is the next um, ID I use for web development sometimes. It's pretty good as well. So basically it's a dev file. We just go and double click on it and it's gonna bring up this installer, which is a Linux package manager. So whenever you see a dev file and this package manager can install that for us, we don't have to go and type in the manual code on terminal. So I'll just type my uh, password for Linux and it's going to get installed. The next thing we need to install is a node server, which is a little bit of trickiness. So here I'll go to a website called node 
linux.js.org and here if we download this file for the linux it's going to be a little bit of the trouble to install because there's so many files you have to bundle them and then use few commands to actually make it up and running so instead what we will do we'll go to uh, other downloads so other downloads we go all the way down and here we have installed node.js via package manager which is like which is pretty much few commands but it's still easier to install instead of just uh, downloading the package and install it. Now here we have a Node.js 9 version and Node.js 8 version. So I'll be installing the latest one, the 9. So we'll just open up the terminal. I'm just going to go and right click on it, add to favorite so I don't have to go here to actually open this up. So here we have a terminal here. So what command we need. So first of all we need to install curl. So here I'll just say sudo sudo is basically a command which makes you a super user on your operating systems it's nothing more than that so sudo app dot get install curl and then it's going to ask you the password uh, type the password and don't worry if you don't see the password uh, writing in there it's basically it just uh, it's just hidden so in the Linux when you type that it just doesn't really show you the password Alright, so here now, the next thing you usually do when you install a new package into your Linux machine, so you go sudo app.app apt.get update. So we want to update our system. It's going to go and grab the updates for it as well. And the next thing we need is uh, node server. So here we'll do now, so we'll just copy this command. I'm going to copy this. Go back to terminal, right click and paste that command there. Enter, it's going to go and grab the package for Node.js version 9.x. Right now, we are going to install by typing this command sudo apt dot, sorry, dash get install dash y Node.js. And now, how easy is that? So if you had to you download the file and package all those things, that's too much, that's too much work. So Terminal is great on Linux. You can install pretty much a lot of things uh, with the Terminal. And I would highly recommend, if you're not sure about Linux Terminal scripting, you should get involved that. There's so, so much cool stuff in it. Now, Node has been installed. Now we can just verify that by typing Node-V. We have a version 9.2.0. I'm gonna just npn dash v so we have an npn version of 5.5.1 uh, as well the next thing because i'll be doing some angular tutorials later on so angular how do we install angular in linux so basically we use npn so node package manager so we go npn dash g which basically tells us install it globally install and then we type at angular slash cli and it's going to go and grab that now it's going to give me an error. I already know it's going to give me an error because we need to be a super user to install NPN. So it's going to give us an error because it's going to say, oh, you're not a super user. So you go and become a super user. So there you go. So for that, we will have to type sudo NPN install dash G, or you can type the flag whenever you want to so type uh, slash G dash G install at angular slash cli and now this should fix that problem and we will have angular install in linux uh, operating system so i can just go and start building on linux applications all right so that was uh, a bit of my uh, web development setup there's another thing that you need to do what i make a tutorials on youtube which is basically i work with Java as well. So I'll say Java JDK and with NetBeans bundle. So search for that. And here we have the Java SC downloads, NetBeans versions. If you watch my uh, Java tutorials, so uh, this is gonna help you a lot because if I and you are in the same operating system and I'll do the same thing, then you can follow along easily. Now I'm gonna install this Linux x64 version and I'm gonna save this file. Now it's a little bit of trick for that file to install as well. I'll show you in a, in a second once it gets downloaded. All right, so Java JDK with NetBeans bundle, it's been installed here. So I'm just gonna open that 
folder. So we have the folder here. Now here, we want to right click and open a terminal. Now here we will type, first of all, chmod space plus x, and then we'll type jdk, and then I'm going to type tab, which would give me the name of that file. So I don't want to bother typing all this uh, hu515-nb, all that stuff. So this is the command, guys. First, so you type chmod, and then plus x, and then you press enter here. Now, once you type this command, then this file becomes executable. So here I type dot slash jdk, press tab, and enter. And now this will bring up the installer for JVM and it's going to install uh, JDK with NetBeans as well. So there we go. So here we'll click on next, 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 next. And it's going to go and install JDK for us, JDK 8 and a net means as well. So next software what I use for Java development is by JetBrains again. So IntelliJ IDEA, this is what I use for that. And um, yeah, let's uh, download that as well. This is going to be pretty much the same thing that you can do with the WebStrom. So WebStrom, uh, we had to go into the bin folder and then in the bin folder, we had to execute that webstorm.sh file. So I'm just going to download that as well. It's a pretty big file. It's about, I don't know, 599 megabytes, which takes about three minutes for my internet connection to get me that. Now we'll go and have a look how far we get with the Java SE development kit. And after doing this, because I'm not going to be making this video very long anymore, after installing all these, you are ready to go with the web development. Obviously, there are other packages, but these are the compulsory packages you need to have installed in your Linux machine so you could go and work on web development or any kind of JavaScript development, right? So you have a Node package manager there and you have uh, NPN installed there. We got a Java as well. So yeah, thanks for watching. It was a quick video. I was setting up my PC, so I was like, yeah, just make a video. Maybe some people will have me will have a trouble installing some softwares in Linux.